Farmer John and Farmer Naj are playing a game where, in essence, they have a circle of rooms and they're taking turns taking out cows from the room where they are each allowed to take out a prime number of cows and for every quote-unquote turn, both farmers go once and the loser of the game is left there with zero cows in the room when it is their turn. So we want to find the farmer that wins the game if both of them play their best. Now it's important to note when solving this question that it's not just the solution we're looking for, but also the approach and how we find that solution. The first strategy I would say that's really important for all questions is to just simplify the question. Now, the first and most obvious way I would say to simplify this question is to just assume that we only have one room with a bunch of cows in it. And if that's still too hard to solve, then I would say simplify the question again. Once we do that, the question I'm going to pose is, we assume that we only have one room and this room has up to 10 cows. We're also going to assume that farmers can only take out one to three cows each turn rather than a prime number of cows. Now, with this scenario, how do we know who wins? Well, it turns out we can very easily just manually solve this, and I highly recommend that you try and solve it by hand by yourself. If there's only one cow in the room, John can take that cow and he wins. Same for two and three. But for four cows, no matter how many cows John takes, even if he takes the most amount of cows possible, three, Nosh can always match that amount and leave zero cows in the room. Even if John takes three, Nosh can take one, leaving it at zero cows. So there's no way for John to win four. If we go to five, we actually realize that John can turn it back into a win because he can take one cow, bringing Nosh to four, and then Naj will be presented with the same scenario John was earlier, where he has four cows, and no matter how many Naj takes, now John can take the counterpart and bring it back to zero. So a scenario example of that is if John took one cow from the five, so now it's at four, Naj took three cows, so now it's at one, and John took the last cow, so now it's at zero. Basically, if there are five cows, John can win, and if you don't quite get that yet, again, I would highly recommend doing the example by hand. The observation that should be made is that players who get a multiple of four in the cows will lose. So as shown here, a room with four cows, Naj loses because John goes first, but a room with five cows, John can win because he can bring it down to four. So by the time Naj gets it, he gets a multiple of four and therefore he loses. Basically, players who get a multiple four will lose. Let's apply this logic to the global question. Now, bear with me, there are a couple parts here. If we assume that we start the room off with a multiple four, whoever's starting off the room, or John, is going to be losing, and whoever's not is winning. Now, the strategy here, in general, for both of these scenarios is that whoever is winning wants to win in this room as fast as possible. Because we're in a circular bar, so the other rooms, even if we're winning in all of the other rooms, it doesn't matter if we lose in this room first. So I'll get more into this later, but the only room that matters is the room that wins or loses first, that ends first, because that immediately ends the game. So the strategy for all of the rooms we're winning in is to win fast. Similarly, for all of the rooms that we're losing in, the strategy for those rooms is to lose slowly. With this in mind, for the winning player in the room with a multiple of four, there's only one number they can pick, which is two. And the reason is because if we pick a prime number, even if it makes us win faster, it's no longer going to be a multiple of four. And the simplest logic we can use is if the number is currently a multiple of four, it's even. If the prime besides two, it's odd. When we take an even minus an odd, it's not going to be even. 
So it's definitely not going to be multiple four, and we effectively probably lose that room. So in order to maintain it as a possible multiple four, or basically not let our opponent turn it into a multiple four, the only number we can pick is two. And since our losing counterpart is trying to delay it, and they also need to keep it at a multiple four, they're going to need to pick two also. Now, if this room is not a multiple four, then the player who gets it, John, has two main goals. First, they want to turn it into a multiple four for Naj, so that we can go to this scenario and John can definitely win. And second, going on this and this, Farmer John wants to win as fast as possible. So he wants to try and decrease the number, total number of cows in the room as fast as possible. So the strategy for not a multiple of four is that Farmer John should pick the greatest prime that will turn this current number of cows into a multiple four. From that, we're then going to transition into a room with a multiple four, just where Farmer John is winning. As I kind of mentioned earlier, since we're in a circular barn, the only room that actually matters is the room that wins the fastest. So, in addition to finding out who wins each room, we should also find out how many moves it takes for each room to finish. So, if it's a multiple of four, using the logic in our table, we can assume that it will win in the number of cows divided by two plus one turns. In the case that it's not a multiple of four, since we subtract our initial greatest prime, it's going to win in the new total number of cows divided by two plus one turns. With these two, for all rooms, we're just going to use the logic in the previous slides to find how many moves it takes to end the game in that room, and then who wins that room. And we're just going to output the winner of the room with the least amount of moves that finishes the fastest. Okay, let's look at the code for this question. We're gonna start off by finding all of the prime numbers. We're going to keep track of them in a Boolean vector of true or false. A simple way to do this is just to loop through all of the values, and every time we reach a prime number, to mark all of its multiples as no longer prime. For each of our prime numbers, we're also going to keep track of a vector called last max, which is for every parity of four, the last prime number that we encountered. The reason we're going to keep track of this is we're also going to keep track of a vector called turns. So for every given possible number of cows in our room, we're going to calculate the number of turns it takes for someone to win. And we can do this by finding the total number of cows minus the largest possible prime that'll turn this cow into a multiple of four and then divide by two plus one. After the prime finding function, we're going to loop through all of the input. So we can loop through the number of rooms. And then for each test case, we're going to keep track of the minimum number of moves it takes to win by keeping track of this variable called min win. It's just going to be the minimum of turns as up here and then itself. We're also going to keep track of who wins by seeing if a mod 4 is equal to 0. We're going to then loop through all of the rooms again and check to see the first room with the minimum number of moves needed for it to win. So when we loop through again, we already know who's going to win in the room, so we're just going to output that, break from the for loop, and that's the end of our program.